Do you like my new background? Yeah. It's totally real. Hello everybody, my name is Dick Coughlin. In my many years here on the internet, I've spent a lot of time having a go at people who I perceive to be, or who I believe are, or who literally just blatantly are, racist. However, after many years of giving them a hard time, I do think it's important to give credit where it's due, and I would like to do that, because for many, 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 many years, these people didn't really know how to progress and move on. And uh, one thing that I got tired of, and one thing that if you deal with this, you no doubt get tired of, is hearing the same uh, tired arguments or excuses over and over again. The old thing of I'm got a black friend or I'm not racist but and all this other stuff. But over the last year or so, they've actually been trying some new things. And I would like to use this opportunity to give credit to them where it's due. I mean, there are certain people, many of them who are cut on YouTube making videos, who like to go on about how, you know, these days because of political correctness and the liberal media and the feminists and the fucking Jews, that the words racist and racism get thrown around far too easily. And so much so does the word racist and racism get thrown around that according to these people, these words now have no meaning. You literally see them say that these days, oh, the word racist, oh, it has no, it means nothing these days. Which begs the question, if it doesn't mean anything, why do you give a shit if someone calls you it? But I would like to thank these people for informing me about the complete and total definitional collapse of the words racist and racism. Because I'm ashamed to admit, if they hadn't told me, I wouldn't have fucking noticed. Like as far as I was aware, the words racist and racism were both words that were clearly defined part of the English language. But now, thank God they've told me, because now that I know, I definitely won't be using those words anymore to accuse anybody of being, because if I do, I'm gonna look a right dicky doodah. And no mistake, my liege. I mean, imagine how embarrassing it would be for me if I was to go on social media and see one of the many unoriginal, completely interchangeable right-wing bullshit munchers doing something like, I don't know, claiming there's a scientific link between race and IQ, quoting scientific journals, the latest of which was 1994, or that the media is all owned by the Jews, or assumes that black people walking down a French high street must mean that immigration is out of control, or throws a lit flare into a dilapidated boat filled with Syrian refugees fleeing a war zone, or advocates boycotting Star Wars because the lead stormtrooper is a Negro, even though stormtroopers are the most disposable fucking aspect characters in Star Wars or wears an it's okay to be white t-shirt as if anyone's ever said it wasn't, or claims that immigrants are destroying Western culture and identity and then gets endorsed by the English Defence League and then joins UKIP, or claims there's a white genocide, or denies historical facts about the Holocaust, or who repeatedly defends white policemen who shoot unarmed black people on the basis that, well, he was breaking the law, or compares black people to a monkey or a gorilla or whatever the fuck, we'll get on that later. But now, when any of that happens, I definitely won't be calling those people racist or accusing them of racism, because as I've been told, these words no longer have any meaning. So there's no point in me trying to actually say this to them, because if these words have no meaning, then these people aren't gonna understand what the fuck I'm saying. They'll just look at me and wonder, why is this nonsensical noise coming out of this man's mouth? I might as well sit there and go, Squizzle Deck! Or, Wankadoodle-doo! Or just something like, Mleh! Because they are all just nonsensical sounds that also have no meaning. Because obviously, that's how words work. We know this to be true. It's literally the case. Words are like anything. If you Words are like literal... Th they're not things that breathe and live and, you know, that, that we actually react. No, 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 no. No, they're actual, like, they're like physical things that have one function, and if we don't use that function, they break and we can't use them ever again. For example, this camcorder. Now, this camcorder is supposed to be used for making videos, but as you can tell, I'm clearly not 
using it for real. That's because for the last few months, I've been covering it in butter and shoving it up my ass. And now it's completely to fucking doesn't work. It's completely unusable. So that's what you've been doing with the word racism. You've been taking racism and you've been shining it up real nice, turning that sun bit sideways and fucking yourself in the ass with it all night. Oh, it's just gone on. I'll have to try harder next time. I mean, as Blair White, who is a genius, by the way, said on Twitter a couple of months ago, if everything is racist, then nothing is racist. No, no, that's, that's literally not true. That's, that is literally the opposite of what's actually the case. If everything is something, then everything is something. And no one's actually claiming that. Can we get this idea out of this... Can we create this... Destroy this meme here and now? This idea that, oh, you call everybody, oh, to you, everything... No, it's only you... It's only the same sort of groups of people who constantly get called it. And their defence is, you think everyone is... No, clearly not. Let's get... These are the logic people. And the first law of logic is what? Uh, that none of them know, because they've never looked up the concept, they just say it as a cat phrase. So I'll repeat it for you, okay? The first law of logic is A equals A. And A does not equal not A. So when you say, if everything is racist, then nothing is racist, you have literally violated the first fucking law of logic. Shoe on head, who is another genius, by the way, said something very similar uh, around about the same time as Blair White, saying, if everyone's a Nazi, then nobody's a Nazi. Yes, again, that's literally how that works. There are, there's a second option. Let's, stop, let's, let's just stop you there. Ladies, I want you to consider something. Right? Yes, I'm going to be mansplained. If I could, I would lean the fuck down and talk right down to you. There's the real background. I know, it, it's not a wall. It's not a fucking wall. If everything is something, then everything is something. There being a lot of one thing does not render that thing obsolete. If everyone has cancer, everyone has cancer. You can't turn around and say, if everyone has cancer, then nobody has cancer. But recently, there's been other white people in the news who have been caught doing racist who are trying new and exciting excuses. And I've got to say, I'm really, really enjoying these ones too. The first one was a guy who'd already been in trouble for this kind of thing, and it was Papa John's. John, the geezer who owns the Papa John's pizza place. This was an amazing piece of it. See, what he did, he was caught saying the N-word on a fucking Skype conversation. And... No, he tried something. What he tried was a kind of reboot, a kind of spin on an old classic. Because what he said was, well, Colonel Sanders used to use that word against black people. Man, he never got any trouble. Now, Colonel Sanders died in 1980 and was old as balls. So it's probably fair to assume that when he did use it, it was a different time. But then that's what they want to go back to, isn't it? The old days. But I've got to say, I admire Papa John's kind of, you know, little spin on this, because what, cause normally what white people do, the excuse they give up, but when they caught, get caught saying that, they like to go around saying, well, other black people go around calling each other the N-word, why can't I do it? Well, what he's done here is completely, it's a completely radical take on this. What he's gone for is, well, this other white bloke, several hundred years ago, was caught saying the N-word, and he didn't get in trouble. Why can't I? I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing spin on it. I've got to admire the man's balls for trying to pull this off because it, it's not an easy sell here. It's like someone saying, look, I'm not racist. In fact, some of my best friends are racist. But let's get on to the other one, which is Roseanne Barr. Now, that's Roseanne Barr's intro. Now, Roseanne was caught, as I sort of alluded to earlier, she was caught on Twitter calling a, a, a black woman a gorilla. She's comparing her to a gorilla. And that's never a good thing. You don't do that. Not a good idea. But Roseanne got in trouble with this. And it was quite interesting because recently Roseanne was on, t was on TV saying that she... Well, I'll play you a clip for it. Here it is. It's literally 300 times. I thought the bitch was white! God damn it! I thought the bitch was white! Now, 
First thing I want to say is, I'm not sure if that's Roseanne Barr. I think that might be Alex Jones in drag. But that, 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 he scrubs up pretty well. But that, that's um, a side. That's a side. Again, it's an interesting take on it. I thought she was white. That's a, okay, fine. But it kind of steps on her other point, her previous excuse, which is that she was taking Ambien, which is a sleeping medication. She was taking this medica medication uh, you know, called Ambien, and that is why she took a lot of that. That's why she said, which hilariously led to Ambien having to release a press release saying racism is not a side effect of it. It's completely not true. You, why wouldn't you lead with the I thought the bitch was white? Not the, you wouldn't you lead with that excuse if that was one of the excuses. You wouldn't start with, you wouldn't start with the, oh, I'd taken a lot of sleep. You'd use that as the backup. As the, oh, look, I'd taken a lot of sleep. You know, you'd use that one. But in Roseanne's defence, she's not the first person to try this line of reasoning. Uh, famously, Nigel Farage, uh, many years ago, when he, after he'd been interviewed by James O'Brien on LBC Radio, and he'd said something about uh, about Romanian immigrants being all being people traffickers, and that he wouldn't want to live next door to a house with Romanian people in it, he he famously came out and got in trouble and came after and said, "Oh, it was a combination of it was very very tired, very tired, I was very tired, very very, 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 very tired." Which again is a weird way to sort of spin it. I was tired, therefore I was racist. I don't know if you've seen these like these racist marches. They, they they're very awake people. I mean, they don't seem to be. They shouldn't be holding torches if they're tired. I mean, maybe these people just need some fucking sleep or something. These are very motivated, angry people. They don't look. They're the most awake you can be. This was also an excuse used again by someone from UKIP called Godfrey Bloom, who, after referring to a bunch of women at a conference as a group of sluts, as you do, he claimed he was heavily medicated, although he did later on change that to he'd had a couple of pints. Uh, pissed as a fart, I think, is the actual thing. However, a lot of people laugh off this whole medication taking thing to make you f racist, but actually, I'm going to spit to a Actually, there's something in this. See, back in 2014, uh, a guy, uh, what political party did he work for? Oh yeah, UKIP. Um, a guy called Kerry Smith, he had to stand down. He was uh, for South Battleton and East Thurrock. Uh, he had to stand down after he had described gays people as, checks notes, fucking disgusting old poofters, and he called a woman with a Chinese name, Chinky. And he blamed his views on prescription drugs he was taking. So. This is not the first, this is a very common thing, he's taking these prescription drugs. But it turns out that there's something in this. Apparently, if you're on some painkiller or sedative or sleeping pill, it does kind of bring that side out in you. According to a guy called David Nutt, Dave Nutt, who is a professor of neuropsychopharmacology, and the director of neuropsychopharmacology at Imperial College London, he claims all that sedatives do is reduce your ability to restrain and hide your thoughts. Saying, politicians, and by that extension I would imagine celebrities, politicians spend their whole lives telling people what they think people want to hear and not what they believe. That takes quite a lot of effort. We know from brain imaging studies that lying and hiding things consumes more brain power than telling the truth. So if people are repressing something they don't want people to know, they have to actively work at it. When you are sedated, the control centers of your brain are dampened down and the underlying deeper truths are less likely to be suppressed and they come to the surface. So actually, when next time you see someone using this excuse that they were on pet painkillers or sedatives or sleeping pills, just point out to them that those pills didn't cause your racism. They simply caused you to be honest about it. And if anything else, that's the one point where I agree with racists, because racists constantly want to go back to the good old days. Because at the end of the day, whilst it's fun to see these people trip arse over tea kettle in front of themselves, 
And whilst it's fun for them to come up with all these rationalizations and excuses for their inexcusable irrationality, I just think we would be able to get move forward and get on with life a little bit easier and a little bit better. We'd be able to move forward a bit if they would just be honest. Brother Neuro, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dick Coughlin, and uh, it was about a year ago uh, this week that I was officially diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy. Now, what that is, that is a, a, a condition that, it's a degenerative nerve condition, and what it basically means is I cannot feel, uh, I can't, at, the, at this stage, I can't have, I don't have any feeling in my hands and feet. They're basically completely numb. Uh, however, over the last year, I have been able to um, you know, despite not being able to work, despite not being able to have a job because the only things I'm trained in, funny enough, need your fucking hands, uh, I've been able to do that because of you guys who uh, support my videos uh, so by, by you know, supporting me on Patreon, donating on PayPal, buying a t-shirt, whatever. And I want to thank you all, all from the bottom of my heart for, for being here because it's been nearly a year and I've been able to do this for about 10 months um, and I, th I want to thank you for that. I will say this, uh, over the last, because since I lost my uh, main channel a couple of months ago, as a result of that, uh, the p Patreon's kind of dipped a little bit, that's to be expected because I'm not reaching, I'm re there's like 13,000 people out there who are not seeing my videos that used to be, so uh, I would like to put this out now, because I haven't done this in a while, but I'm just pimping out my Patreon, if you like my videos, if you enjoy my content, you want to see me make more of that, you know, you want to be able to support me and be able to give me a sort of sense of independence from having a, be able to earn a fucking living, um, an honest living, then please, you know, go to my Patreon below, you can donate whatever the hell you want, it's per video, uh, you know, generally there's the four to, five, four to five charges a month, donate whatever you can, that's fine. Thank you very much for doing that. That would mean the world to me. Otherwise, you can go to PayPal and make a donation, or you can buy something on my shirt, or you can go, please go subscribe to my other channel, Insane Rap Bloke, if you want to go watch things like my live streams and backup channels. Other than that, um, thank you very much for all your help over the last year or so. Hopefully, we can move forward and carry on. And uh, it's not real. It's not, look, it's not even a wall. It's not even a fucking wall. It's just a. It's nice, though, isn't it? Thank you.